Welcome to the Mind Body Podcast, your rebellious podcast with your host, me, Maria, where it is all about a strong body, calm mind, healing, as well as fully living. It is my intent that you will find inspiration and motivation to take care of yourself, to prioritize self-care, and truly create a life that you want to live. So what is this podcast going to be about? We are going to talk a lot about self-care. We are going to talk about movement, exercise, physical activities. We are going to talk about growth mindset, transformation, personal growth, mental wellness, mental well-being, and so much more. The guests on this show will be people who talk and walk, people who prioritize self-care even with their busy schedules, people who have transformed their lives, people who are living the life that they want. I will tell you, a little bit about myself. So I am originally from Eastern Europe. I am Bulgarian and I moved to the United States in 1992 for six months, which now has turned into 30 years. I come from a family of academics and as a child, even though I displayed potential in athletics, I was highly encouraged to focus on the academics, which I did. And making good grades, doing well in school was a big priority for my family. And I did that. I displayed great potential when I was in elementary school. I was on the swim team. However, sports were in the way of academia, which is why sports were pushed to the side and focus was on private lessons in anything you can think of. We moved to the United States in 1992 when my dad was invited to work at the University of Georgia as an exchange scientist. And we came, as I mentioned, for six months. We ended up staying. We originally moved to Athens, Georgia, where I went to high school. I went to Clark Central High School and graduated there as a salutatorian and went to the University of Georgia to pursue uh, an undergraduate degree in finance. I graduated with highest honors and moved on to Atlanta, where I worked for MCI WorldCom. That was my first official job, professional job in operations. And from there on, I stayed into the operations world. I was in the finance world. I was in the insurance industries and I was in roles such as operations, finance, in um, After I worked for a couple of years, I completed my master's degree, my MBA degree in finance at Georgia State University. Once again, with highest honors, I knew what was expected of me and I did it and then continued working. I did my schooling while working full time. I moved through the corporate ranks and was doing pretty well professionally. I was in corporate for about 17 years. On the side, I had a side gig since I was 16. I got into the fitness industry and started working out at the age of 12 because kids were making fun of my growing butt and curves. So fitness was a way for me to deal with the bullying. And I find myself escaping to the gym to get in shape and to feel better. Once we moved to the United States, I started teaching gym classes At the age of 16, and I started teaching, for those of you who can relate, I started teaching the high-impact aerobics, the step aerobics, the kickboxing, the spinning, the cycling, the body pump, whatever you want to call it, um, the newest name for the body weights class was, and I loved it. And I did that throughout my professional career as a side geek. I love motivating people. I love getting bodies to sweat. I love getting bodies getting stronger. And it was just something that I enjoyed. It fulfilled me. It made me happy. I had my baby girl in 2010. And in 2012, I discovered Pilates, if you can believe it, because at that time, there was not a yoga studio close by. I was originally not impressed with Pilates. I didn't sweat. My heart rate didn't go up. It was very different than the traditional high-impact workouts I was used to teaching. But something about it kept me interested. In 2013, I became a 600-hour certified Pilates instructor. 
And I stuck with that, doing teaching Pilates on the sides, evenings and weekends. Pilates truly changed my life. In 2016, I resigned my corporate job as a finance director and I started my own company. I named it Rebellious because everybody told me that I am crazy. So Rebellious is a reflection of be who you are, follow your dream, follow your heartbeat and be you. Let go of the stereotypes of the shoots, the things that people tell you you have to do, you should do and follow your heart. And it was Pilates that I credit for allowing me to quiet the mambo jumbo that was going in here and to connect to to my heartbeat, to connect to my intuition. As I started the studio, it was a little bit of a rough start. I didn't find the support system that I was hoping I was going to find. And that pushed me into a lot of mindset work. It was a tough time. It was a lonely time, but it was a time to get it together and Decide, is entrepreneurship something that I want to pursue or do I want to go back to corporate? So there we go. Six years later, here I am sitting in front of you. My life completely changed. Uh, Living a life of happiness, fulfillment, freedom, which is why I now coach and teach. So I am not only the founder and CEO of Rebellious International, I am also a Pilates coach. I'm a mindset coach. I'm an NLP certified practitioner. I have done a lot of coaching with David Nego on universal laws. And everything that I teach today is everything that has taken me from where I was to where I am today. And in six years, it almost feels like I'm a completely different person. To give you perspective, I had my first anxiety attack when I was in high school and I was the kid from a country nobody has heard about that was part of the smart group kids that had an ambience called for, Um, not really what you're looking for. Um, as grabbing attention as a teenager. But my anxiety attacks and my levels of stress were part of my life. And I just thought all successful people thrive in similar fashion. I was a go, 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 very highly um, perfectionist, control freak, very much, very intense. And even my workout routine, I've always been religious to my workout routine and movement because it has made me feel good was intense. I was married to my heart rate monitor. I was monitoring my calories, my uh, intensity, my heart rate. And I ditched the heart rate monitor one day when I came back from work, I went for a run. It was a stressful day and I came back and I was stressing out about, I don't know, being a few seconds slower on my running pace than usual. And that's when I decided, you know, I am exercising to feel better, not to get extra stressed. Through my journey, my view of the fitness industry has completely changed. I used to be that person who used to teach the HIIT workouts. I was always big about posture and alignment, but this journey into Pilates, understanding and learning more about movement and the art form that it is, has given me a completely different perspective. And I now teach people to really use movement in something so much more than purely a tool to lose weight, which sadly, I think that's how most people view movement. Movement serves us well in so many ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, It's great for our circulation, for our lungs, for our hearts, for all of the known benefits that we know. Movement is also great for quieting this. And intentional movement and creating that mind-body connection, which I thought I knew what I thought it was, but I really didn't. It is so intense. It is so powerful. And as I mentioned, using movement to tune into your body, to evaluate how you're feeling, to evaluate how stressed you are, as well as being gentle and kind to your body and really enjoying the movement. That is what I'm, I'm about, passionate about teaching people. So when Rebellion started, it started as a fitness studio. It started as a Pilates studio. And what I would share with you is that since I was in the fitness industry, since probably about age 20, I told my friends, one day I'm going to have my own fitness studio. And that was my dream. But, you know, there was the salary and the paycheck and the benefits and blah, blah, blah. And... 
when I connected to my intuition, I felt guided. And I know for those of you who are very knowledge-based and common sense going like, what? But that's exactly what happened. I really felt compelled to make this change and give it a try. And I did. And I'm so glad that I did because I feel now, now I'm living with purpose and I'm in my purpose. So the studio started as a fitness studio as my journey unfolded, as I started observing patterns in people, in their movements changing based on their emotional state, based on their mental state. I started uh, tying the emotional and the mental to movement and realized that our body is this amazing tool, this amazing gem, this amazing treasure that reflects our status of how we are doing physically, but also mentally, emotionally, as well as spiritually. So now I combined the mindset piece along with the movement piece to get people to discover who they are. I, I was successful by, based on societal standards. I was raising up the corporate letters. I had a good job, good education, good grades, all of that. And what this journey has taught me is that I was very book smart. I was pretty street smart. I grew up in the city, but I was not life smart. I really did not understand the basics of living. I was living a life that was dictated to me. I was living a life dictated by shoots and musts and have tos and what people think and what people are going to say versus living authentically. And that is exactly my purpose now, to help people to connect to and uncover who they really are and then unleash by taking action to living the life that they want. Action is the only thing that will change your life. And action is action to change your life is frequently uncomfortable because it is action outside of the comfort zone. If you take my example of quitting a successful six-figure profession with perspective to start from ground zero in an industry that's oversaturated, I was told I'm too old to be doing what I'm doing. No, I'm not. Um, that's unconventional. And that's a lot of the feedback that I got. You shouldn't do that. That's a mistake. And we tend to allow those around us and the noises and the voices around us, as well as our subconscious thinking, our quiet voices, to convince us to stay in the box, to stay in the comfort zone. And life really starts outside the comfort zone. So this podcast is my intent to get my message out there because I really want everybody to have the experience that I'm having. I had no idea I was missing this experience because I knew what I knew and I didn't know what I did, what I didn't know. And as my journey is unfolding, I'm really on a quest to change the landscape of the wellness industry. The wellness industry is in their need of change. We're not taught to prioritize ourselves. So we are not taught to make self-care a priority. There is stigma. There is selfishness, there is guilt that goes along with that. We're so conditioned to live a life of shoots. And from a client perspective, it is very important for you to realize that you're in charge of your self-care, of your well-being, nobody else's. And it's upon you to take charge. And from a provider perspective, I see so much burnout of providers, you know, providers who do what I do, they have back pain, they don't sleep, they're highly stressed, they're anxious. And those people are trying to bring goodness and calm to the people they're serving. It doesn't work like that. There is clashing of energy. So for the providers, it is about being authentic, being yourself, serving the world, but also not sacrificing yourself because we don't need to be marchers. When we inspire and grow That is how we spread that light to those who we serve. We don't want to burn out to serve others. We are serving neither us nor the world when we do that. So when we all, I truly believe that change starts with each and every one of us. I mean, yes, the industry is unregulated. And yes, could there be regulation? Could there be no regulation? That's a whole different topic. I believe where the industry can change is by shifting the mindset, as I said, of consumers and providers alike to where we make ourselves number one. And some of you might even be going like, oh, that sounds selfish or uncomfortable. And the topics that we'll be addressing here, they might not necessarily be comfortable, but that's the point. 
We want to get you thinking, thinking outside the box, challenging yourself and helping you living intentionally, helping you moving intentionally. That's what I preach. Don't just move, move with intention, move with awareness. We want to spike your body and mind awareness to where you are. I was shocked how unaware I was of the way I think of my conditioning, of my patterns. They're just automatic and they're there and we just go on autopilot. We keep spinning on that hamster wheel and we forget to treasure the present moment and the gift of life that we have. So I am so excited to be starting here. Please do make sure that you subscribe. We're going to start with great guests with people who are inspirational, motivational, people who are true rebellious souls. And again, my intent is to inspire you, to motivate you to live your best life yet. And your thought for the day is how much intention do you have in your day? Do you go through the motions or are you intentional with each and everything that you do? With that, we're going to wrap up your rebellious podcast, the Mind Body Podcast, with me, your host, Maria. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a rebellious day. <laughs>